It's always been a dream of mine to build a great looking Necromunda board. So I thought instead of just dreaming about it, I was going to take some action and do it. You might have seen my Necromunda tiles from a few months ago. Now, I didn't want to do my walkways and things like that blue because I thought they would just look exactly the same as the floor. So I've decided to go for a rusty effect. So I'm going to show you how I did that. What I'm working with are all the walkways from the platforms and stairs box for Necromunda and I've spray painted all of them black and then lead belcher. After that undercoat, I applied Magma Droth Flame to all the flat areas except for the trim around the outsides. This might seem like too bright an orange, but it works perfectly for this, trust me. After letting the Magma Droth Flame dry completely, I slapped on Agraxer shade. Don't be shy at this stage, just slap it on there. Try not to get the trim, we're not doing that bit yet and it'll just create more work for you later on. So every bit that's orange should be covered in Agrax. The absolute best thing about this paint job is that you don't need to thin any paints right up until the last stage and even then that's optional. So you can just take all the paint straight out the pot. You'll need a dry brush and troll slayer orange for this stage. So get a bit of troll slayer in your brush, wipe most of it off in a tissue and then scrub it over all the orange area. You want this to be as light as possible and then just build it up. You don't want to leave streaks because that will ruin the whole effect. So start off with nothing and then increase it as you go on. It'll definitely build up and you don't want it uniform either, so go harder in some areas than others. Take your time over this because it's kind of the basis of the whole effect. This whole paint job is not the easiest one around, but it is effective. Over the course of maybe four or five evenings, you could paint an entire platforms and stairs box and that would seem like real progress. I know as a working dad how difficult it is to get time, so these paint jobs have to be easy to drop in and out of. Next you want some typhus corrosion and use an old brush for this because typhus corrosion goes through brushes like nothing on earth. You want a relatively large brush but one that you can control. I had to swap out three or four brushes for this because I ruined one after the other so just be careful. With a small amount of typhus corrosion on your brush you just want to stab it into the corners next to the metal bits all the way around. You just want to create like a dirty effect where maybe the middle panel would get cleaned on occasion, but around the outside would never get cleaned and all the dirt would accumulate. So that's where you want this. Don't be uniform with this, just try to stab it in random places around your tiles. After that very messy step, grab some lead belcher or whatever silver you're using, because you could use any kind of silver, uh, and paint over all the trim again. Yes, this is time consuming, but it makes it a lot easier to put a wash on afterwards, and it's not fighting with the typhus corrosion. And plus there'll be a lot of orange on there as well, which you don't want. So take your time, just go over it, just make it silver again. So these little brass buckles were just painted with Rune Lord brass. It's a hassle to paint them, it is time consuming, but it does add something. Then we're going to get onto the washes. So slap on Null Noil, Agrax Air Shade and Athonian Camo Shade in any combination you want. For some of the other tiles I used Plague Bearer Flesh as well, just for a brighter green. And I think that worked really well. You could basically grab any paint from your shelf and just apply it. It would still look good. Purples, greens, reds, browns, whatever. So after the washes, grab a lighter silver. In my case, I used plate armor from two thin coats, but you could just as easily use iron breaker or something like that. Wipe most of it off in the tissue and dry brush all the silver areas. It doesn't matter if it spills onto the tiles a little bit. It just adds to the effect. So take your time, just try to catch a few of the edges, make them a bit brighter to make it look like a shoe's scuffed over them and rubbed some of the dirt off and left a bit of the silver showing through. And after that, we're nearly finished with the basic tiles. This is the bit that needs thinning. I thinned down Troll Slayer Orange until it was just water, just orange water, and then I dropped it into all the screw holes and all the lines and indents across the tiles. I took a lot of time doing this, but I think just that wee hint of orange in the metal, just it really brings it out. You can leave this step out if you want, but I like doing it. You can also splash a bit onto the grill, just make it look like it's rusted over in a few bits. Then I decided to paint some hazard stripes on one of the tiles. I painted it with Avalanche Sunset, it took three or four coats to be solid, and then I applied masking tape. I just want to show that hazard stripes are just as easy with a brush as they are with an airbrush, I'm not saying they come out quite as well, they come out a bit smoother with an airbrush, but it's possible to do with just a wee roll of masking tape and a big brush. And a roll of masking tape is a lot cheaper than an airbrush. So break off the correct length of masking tape, start in the middle because that you want a perfect stripe from corner to corner and lay it diagonally as carefully as you can and keep adding strips parallel to it until you've covered the entire yellow area. Pull off every second strip. This might seem like it's wasted a bit of masking tape, 
But what this ensures is that each strip is exactly the same width, which is very important for hazard stripes. So after that, get some black. I used Black Legion and paint it onto the bits where you just took the tape off. Hands up anyone that forgot to keep in the lines and didn't worry about the orange border around it. So it's a bit messy, but with this colour scheme it's very easily fixed. So slap on that black, make sure it's all covered, make sure it's opaque, i.e. completely covered, completely solid, and then you can move on to the next stage. Just before it's dried, you can pull off the masking tape. If you do this when it's dried, sometimes it pulls a bit of paint with it, so just make sure it's just when it's still wet. After that, slap on some more Agrax Air Shade, I'm finding that really difficult to say these days, and let it dry. Now, I have to say, this is old Agrax Air Shade, so I don't know what the new one does, but I honestly don't know an alternative to do this step. After that is dry, get a lighter yellow. I used Ereal Yellow in this case, and did a little edge highlight on all the yellow stripes, just at the edges of the panel. I was very careful with this, and then after that I dragged a little yellow line where I thought it was appropriate down across the diagonal stripe. I then used a light, an even lighter yellow and just painted a smaller highlight inside that one. After that I did exactly the same with the black stripes except with, in this case with Dawnstone. Right, now for fixing my mistakes where I put black all over the orange. Just get your typhus corrosion again. Dab it over the black, it will cover absolutely fine and it actually looked quite an interesting pattern so it was like a happy accident. It's a great feeling when someone's used my recipes for their own stuff. So let me know if you're going to do that in the comments below and I would love to see photos on social media if you could tag me in them. So like and subscribe for more. I'll be continuing this series until I've got a fully painted Zone Mortalis board for Necromunda. And then I'm starting a Necromunda campaign so hopefully I'll get a lot of that on video. If you're looking for something else to watch, I'd recommend this one. Cheers!